It is the result of gross-out culture spilled all over professional sports cultivated by the explosion of video games and a profound embrace of mutants across retail marketing. And it may be lost forever. But how? How can you lose something that took up so much space across industries? And what does it mean to be lost? Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the History of Mutant League. Mutant League is a 40-episode animated series that originally ran on Saturday mornings. That's 40 episodes over two seasons from 1994 through 1996, an incredible run for a show that today, in the United States, has been virtually wiped from existence. The world changed forever one fateful day when an earthquake disrupted a professional football game, similar to the earthquake that disrupted the 1989 World Series, except this one opened up a chasm beneath the stadium, exposing a subterranean fountain of toxic waste. The toxic fluid and fumes spilled out into the stadium, mutating the players into hideous monsters, rending the flesh from their bones, horns protruding from their faces, and back, and arms, and extra eyes, beaks, tails, just an absolute mess. A mockery of biology, of humanity, of evolution. But also not something so terrible that marketing can't fix it. Hey, look, ultimately it's not that different from what was already happening. The players are stronger and faster, some of them are harder to look at, others kind of interesting now. Management is just as corrupt and opportunistic as they've always been. They're outside now matching their inside. A new league called Mutant League is established with all of the new kinds of players and new abilities. MVPs like Bones Justice, who plays for the Midway Monsters, are still highly sought after talents by owner slash commissioner Zalgor Prig. Zalgor wants all of the best players on one of the teams he is personally invested in, like the Slay City Slayers, the Screaming Evils, the Derangers, and the Ooze. It is the push and pull between ownership attempting to control the players and the players attempting to assert their own will on the playing fields and power structure within the league that drives the series. A mirror of real life professional sports, but with the violence turned up to Mortal Kombat 11. Busty! Because in this league, literally anything goes across sports. From football to hockey to racing, these mutants play all the sports and are encouraged to do all the things it takes to either win or completely destroy the other team. Holding, punching, kicking, biting, eye gouging, choking, scratching, bone breaking, razor blading, impaling, decapitating, exploding, gassing. Heck, you can throw a guy in a giant pit in the middle of the field. If you literally aren't cheating, you literally aren't trying, and you will probably get maimed or thrown in a pit in the middle of the field. But it is a show for kids, and if you want to go that hard with the violence, you gotta make it cool with the censors. So in the world of Mutant League, no one stays down for long. Broken bones, severed limbs, spilled blood, after the games are over, the players can take a spin in the rejuvenator to put everything back to their original horribly mutated selves, ready to do it all again tomorrow. Mutant League the Cartoon was based on the Mutant League video game series. That series kicked off in 1993 with Mutant League Football and continued in 1994 with Mutant League Hockey. Both were available exclusively on the Sega Genesis because Sega has what Nintendo don't. Those two games continued a trend of genetically modified sports games that goes all the way back to Monsters of the Midway by TSR included with an issue of Dragon Magazine in 1982. It was a tabletop, stats-driven game where the action played out with dice, cardboard tokens representing the players, and a paper hex grid football field. In 1986, Games Workshop released the first in their series of Blood Bowl games. It was followed by a second edition in 1988, and then a simplified version called Crunch in 1991. That same year, Cyber Stadium series Base Wars, an all-robot version of baseball, was released on the Nintendo Entertainment System. The early 90s saw a convergence of pop culture trends in professional sports, video games, and anything with mutants in it, especially if those mutants were either created by pollution or attempting to save the world world from it. Or both. 
Michael Jordan, Bo Jackson, and Wayne Gretzky had made pro sports viewing must-see entertainment. The three were so popular, so internationally marketable, that they were featured together in a Saturday morning cartoon called Pro Stars in 1991. That international sports marketing culminated in 1992's USA Olympic Basketball Dream Team, an all-star team of the best and most commercially successful players to ever play the game. Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo were battling it out in the early stages of the console wars, Sega having an edge when it came to sports games and especially with the John Madden football, the standard bearer for football games. 1993 was a milestone for the series as it was the first year it included officially licensed NFL team names and logos. And of course, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the X-Men at the height of their 90s popularity, making mutant a household word, making mutant synonymous with hero. The Mutant League, sports play the mutant way. Today, Bones Justice, Sputer, and Razor Kid challenge the evil KT Slayer. Are you ready for some football? Here's the first play. It's a handoff. Here's Razor's kickoff. It's blocked by Slayer. Yes. Someone's roughing the kicker. Time for your backup head. And Bones is it's back. It's the Bone Cycle. He throws long. Touchdown. Slam it, Savage Sports. The Mutant League. It's not the win. New Mutant League sports figures and Bone Cycle each sold separately. The 1993 Sega Genesis game Mutant League Football was produced by Electronic Arts and built on the same engine as their wildly successful John Men Football 93 engine. While the football mechanics are similar, the game reskins the players as mutants and skeletons and aliens and robots and removes any sense of fair play or subtlety. In a future post-apocalyptic world, radiation has mutated the human race and the dead walk the earth. Aliens have invaded, everything is chaos, but thankfully we still have sports. They just feature a lot more explosives, fire, electricity, and other on-field hazards. Electronic Arts applied the same approach to Mutant League Hockey a year later in 1994. Mutant League the Animated Series was created by Michael Mendheim, who was also the lead designer for both Mutant League video games. It was a co-production of Franklin Waterman and Electronic Arts. It was distributed by Claster Television. Season 1 ran for 13 episodes, Season 2 an additional 27 episodes. What? You probably won't recognize most of the names in the cast. In fact, the Internet Movie Database only shows profile pictures for Doug Stone and Jeff Nimoy. And yes, Jeff is Leonard Nimoy's second cousin once removed. To go along with the animated series, Galoob released a series of action figures and vehicles. Limited in posability, they were driven by their action features and inhuman mutant aesthetics. They fit right in on shelves stocked full of Ninja Turtles, Toxic Crusaders, Biker Mice from Mars, and Street Sharks. Head Shark! All your favorites made the line. Bones Justice throws monster passes, KT Slayer featured head launching touchdowns, Razor Kid with tail whipping kicks, and Sputor with fly off arms. Two vehicles were released, the Bone Cycle, a football-firing hovercraft, and the Savage Cruiser, a puck-shooting hockey cycle. The back of the packaging teased hockey mutants coming soon, but alas, they did not. Despite a 40-episode cartoon with toys and a video game fan base, the only other licensed merchandise we could find were Mutant League Pogs, or Fun Caps, depending on where you're from. Let us know in the comments if you ever owned something like a Mutant League beach towel, roller skates, or exploding birthday cake. The only other appearance of the Mutant League characters would be in issues 31 through 36 of Sonic the Comic. Sonic the Comic was an official Sega comic series published in the UK by Fleetway Publications. It featured primarily Sonic the Hedgehog stories, but would also showcase stories about other Sega characters in games like Shinobi or Golden Axe or Mutant League. The story, Bring Me the Head of Coach Bricka, focuses on a particular event wherein League Commissioner Zalgor Prigg hires Dr. Wiz to create a series of robots to prevent Bones Justice and the Midway Monsters from dominating the League. He then attempts to recover the severed head of Coach Bricka, the best coach in the Mutant League, so that he can upload the coach's genius to the robots, which can combine into a giant, and I'm quoting here, stunt to combine a coniforma bot. <laughs> It went way, way, it went way worse in rehearsal, and I'm disappointed. <laughs> Mutant League was cut into a single 69-minute movie called Mutant League the Movie in 1996 and released on VHS by Columbia TriStar Home Video. Other than that single cassette, only a handful of episodes can be found on the web, certainly not in any official licensed capacity, certainly not in any degree of quality that wouldn't give you a headache. The rest of the series appears to be lost. Or at least considered lost. Or at least was considered lost for a long time, then wasn't, then was again. 
Look, we're over 70 years into broadcast television as we know it. It is hard to believe that tragedies and acts of God notwithstanding, that any show with any degree of rerunability or special DVD collectionicity could ever be truly lost. Legally inaccessible, perhaps. Willfully suppressed, certainly. It doesn't matter how bad something is, how little perceived value it may have, there is value in its existence to pop culture, to the creator's professional portfolio, and as a snapshot of the evolution of consumable media. Regardless of your opinion on TurboTeen, is it not for future generations to decide where it lands on the spectrum of the arts with respect to the consumable media of the millennia to come? Individual prints, master copies can be and have been lost. Whether due to fire, flood, war, or George Lucas, there are things that can never be recovered. There are things that now only exist in the minds of the people who saw them and nowhere else. And once those people are gone, those memories are gone with them. According to Lost Media Archive, only one episode of Mutant League exists fully intact. At some point years ago, Mutant League creator Michael Mendheim himself uploaded some episodes to his own YouTube channel. They have since been removed. Is this the result of tragedy? Is this the result of a collective lapse in memory about the series? Or something darker? Something more ominous? Yeah, it is. It's called the law. And the law protects whoever currently owns the rights to the property, which, try as we might, we could not conclusively determine. Might be Electronic Arts, might be Sony, might be George Lucas. What we were able to conclusively determine, thanks to an assist from Jason over at the Nova Scotia-based YouTube channel, Tracy's Basement, is that the entire Mutant League animated series can be streamed online today, right now, for free, via CTV. That's Canadian television, available exclusively in Canada. Mutant League sports games came back just a short decade later. After failing to release Mutant League basketball back in the day, 2006 would see the release of the original Mutant League football for the PlayStation Portable. In 2009, Mutant Speed Demons was also found to be a potential project that never made it through development. Nearly 10 years after that, Mutant League creator Michael Mendheim spearheaded the development of Mutant Football League at Digital Dream Entertainment. It was released for PC in 2017 and then Xbox One, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and various mobile platforms in 2018. Our director, Dwayne Ferguson, continues to maintain exposure for Mutant League. You can purchase a digital sketchbook of his designs for the show via Amazon for your Kindle-compatible devices. It provides a rare glimpse behind the scenes of a brand that crossed the boundaries between video games, television, comics, and action figures. Mutant League had a winning streak that spanned media, collectibles, and interactive entertainment. It captured the imagination of sports fans who weren't normally interested in mutants. It captured the imaginations of gamers who weren't normally into sports. And it captured the mutants who had been mutated by our toxic waste and put them to work to entertain us for a short time. Unless you live in Canada, where Mutant League lives forever. For now. What? Hey. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe, it's going slow. I'll just fill. Uh, please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you haven't heard, we started a second channel called Toy Galaxy 2, that's T-O-O. -O. Head over there and subscribe for stuff we don't post here. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy or become a YouTube channel member. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below where Mutant League hit your pop culture radar. I knew there was a game, although I never played it, but I had no idea there was an animated series or toys until we were doing the research for this video. It is one of the few subjects that we have covered that has completely escaped my own personal knowledge all these decades since it aired and had a presence on the shelves. In my defense, I also did not know until this video that there was a difference between Mutant League and Blood Bowl. That feels like not my fault. And I'm gonna let myself off the hook on that one. <laughs> it's all your fault. I didn't do it. Cut. <laughs>